What's up, YouTube? Today, I'm going to go over one of the most expensive profiles I think I've ever seen in Path of Exile in the Temp League. The gear that this guy has is insane. And the coolest part is he's actually playing one of our previous builds that we made in the previous league. And it's kind of cool to see someone who puts theory into paper. Or is that the saying and how it goes pencil to paper? Because I always thought that this build was possible, but I never thought that anyone would have the currency to pull it off. So I'm going to go over the build. But before we get into that, recently Twitter on Path of Exile sent out a tweet that said microtransaction prizes and demigods authorities for both the Zizzeran Gauntlet and console endless delve events have been, or Gauntlet, have been distributed. Check your messages on the website to see if you want. It's now safe to delete characters from these events. We hope you enjoy the events, right? So basically, in order to see if you want anything, you go to the Half of Exile site, and then you go to your messages over here, and then you see, holy moly, right? How could one person win so many rewards, right? So you see you have Hardcore SSF Gauntlet, so you want a Stygian Herald effect, and then we want the Dragon Hunter Armor Pack. And then we want the wild wings and then we want the sphinx wings. So pretty much we got a clean sweep of every single reward possible. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rewards total. And the reason behind this is because I don't think player participation was super, super high. Or not player participation, but people just did not perform very well in the gauntlet this time so you can uh, go by experience and then you can see the total characters that actually got to 95 was pretty low so these are already level 94 so i think there's probably one two three four, probably like around 65 people that got to level 95 and the way that these events work is that they do a random drawing for let's see they do a random drawing so level 50 60, 1,000 wall footprints, 1,000 faith guard weapon effects, so 3,000 people total will get it. And it seems like the way they did these drawings is that each one is a separate drawing, right? So you can win this reward, Dragon Hunter, and then you can also win the Stygian. So since there's only 60 people who reach like level 95, that means there's a large majority of people who literally want every single drawing as it's like an 80% chance to win. And then this is the same. I don't know how many people actually reached level 90 because it seems like there wasn't that many. So I think there's around 50 people per page of this. And then you can see here level 92. And then this is already... So there's around like 50, so 350. So probably around... Let's say like 400 people total that got this. So it was pretty easy to win all of these. I don't think I won the Wasteland armor set, but I got these two. So basically, this event is actually a great way to farm MTX. I think some of these MTXs are actually pretty expensive, right? So if you actually go to the shop and you go look at the armor packs that they have. So let's see. Can you actually look up how much an armor pack is? All I know is armor packs are pretty expensive. They're like $42. So in the end, probably ended up with like a couple hundred dollars worth of MTX. So pretty uh, thankful for Chris. Or not Chris, but Zizzerman, or whoever came up with the rewards. But in the future, if you guys want to get some free MTXs, or not really free because you do have to spend a while playing, all you have to do is you just have to sign up for the races that don't have that many people. Because I think every single league is a separate drawing. I'm not sure if it's all the same. So if you play in a less populated league, for instance, then you'll have a much better chance at getting... Or maybe these will be drawn at random shared. Oh, so it doesn't matter what version of the event. So these are actually shared across all versions. So the gauntlet is a pretty specific thing in that there weren't that many people participating overall because of the difficulty of the event. So you can't really just go to like hardcore trade and expect to get this. So I was actually thinking that I could get even more rewards, but it seems like it's pretty hard to actually be able to get all of them. Man, the Atlas Invasion one actually looks sick. But I never got anything for the Endless Delve event. And I'm pretty sure that's just because there's so many more people who, who participated in the Endless Delve. So anyhow, let's get straight into this profile. And this profile is the most insane profile I think I've ever seen in a trade league. Now, in this profile, you might see it's Eternity Shroud. You see a 
what's it called squire and this is eternity shroud lightning strike berserker i did try out playing this build last league now the main difference with this build now is there's some interesting new chase items that didn't really exist before namely the squire and the mage blood and both of these items are extremely extremely expensive so you can see here eternity shroud is a build where you benefit a lot by having all shaped items so you gain five percent of elemental damage as extra chaos damage per shape item equipped now what this means is that eternity shroud really benefits from conversions so it benefits when the skill is lightning and then when you convert it all to cold it gets all the extra chaos again so it's pretty much like double dipping the bonus of the gains five percent of le damage as extra chaos damage so then this is a triple converted skill is lightning and it's fully converted from lightning strike being 60 50 percent of fizz damage converted to lightning damage and then you also have the watcher side which is 40 percent of lightning damage converted fizz damage converted to lightning damage so first of all it converts from fizz to lightning and then it converts all of the lightning to cold with call of the brotherhood and then lastly he uses cold to fire to convert it all to fire or not all of it but a large chunk of it to fire so what this means is that you have an insane amount of chaos damage from this build and if all of your items are shaped you actually are able to ignore enemy monster chaos resistance now the hard part about this build is getting all shaped items so a lot of times people want to use red blade banner but you cannot actually get a shaped red blade banner because it is impossible and it's just not allowed you can't even trash the treasure it and believe me i have tried it so this person is utilizing the fact that the new 11 link or 12 link claw is a shaper and elder item so this build is going to have some insane damage not only does it have a claw a mirror claw that is probably worth around three mirrors after mirror fees it also has a shaped squire in order to take advantage of this and this is also a plus two level of socket aoe gem squire now you might be wondering how much is all of this gear going to be, right? So if you take a look at Squire as Shaped Influence. Let's see. Squire with Shaper Influence is roughly 6 mirrors without a good implicit. 15 mirrors with... Or I, is this the same guy's profile? Yeah, I think this is actually the same guy's profile. I think he might be selling the bill listed 4 days ago. So he values to stay around like 15 mirrors. It's probably around like 8 to 10 mirrors, depending on what someone is actually willing to pay for it. And then he has an Eternity Shroud with plus one level of socketed gems and plus one to all max res. The nice part about plus one of socketed gems is it actually makes the Enlightened level five, which actually helps out a lot in the aura reservation problem. So he has all of his uh, auras linked here. Anger, Enlightened, Determination, Hatred, Wrath, and Precision. And then here he has Lightning Strike linked to Nightblade, Awaken added Lightning Damage. I'm not really sure why he's not using Anomalous Nightblade. Divergent Inspiration, Cold to Fire, and Awaken added Cold Damage. And he actually has all level 6 and 20 quality gems. So next we have the Helmet. The Helmet is actually kind of an easy craft. It's a Shaper Warlord Helm. Normally if you played a normal version of Lightning Strike without um what's it called eternity shroud you still would have this helm so this helm is pretty much made by awakened orbing together nearby enemies take nine percent la damage and elevated fire res nearby enemies have negative 12 and i think he just reforges crit once he has an open suffix on awakened orbing the two together and then once you have that you do suffixes cannot be changed reforge life more likely until you get double t1 life roll and that's like pretty hard but it's not exactly the craziest item to craft so this item is super super nice it's pretty much all t1s right but not too crazy so he has enhanced hydra spear berserk and a novelist blood rage here linked and now he has two call of the brotherhood shaped and this one has hatred effect and this one has no real implicit and it's just cold and lightning res now the nice part about this item here is that this allows him to convert lightning all the way to cold and he has 48 percent 48 percent so when you do this you have to make sure you get a catalyst on it and you get 20 20 percent quality and now he has gloves and these gloves are actually i think the worst item he actually has so usually you would have a plus two strike gloves for lightning strike 
or any strike skill in general, and it's a Hunter Gloves. But I'm not sure why he has Sokka the Gems are supported by level 60 slower projectiles, and I think he might have just put together this profile, and maybe he Maven warped the gloves and bricked it. I don't really know what's going on with this gloves, but this is by far the worst piece of gear that he has. So maybe he just needed to fix the it issue as he has 193 it is a lot. So he probably did not need this pair of gloves. Maybe he sold his old pair of gloves. But next we have the mage blood and this mage blood is pretty insane. So a shaped mage blood is already like what? Let's see how much a shaped mage blood goes for. I think it probably goes for like six beers, five beers. Oh, it's only like five beers. This guy, I don't really know if he sells. Oh, it's a leftmost three. So this one is leftmost four. So it's like five beers, maybe 10, maybe more. Who knows how much it actually goes for. Extremely, extremely expensive item. So you can say here, this build is easily worth like 20 beers, right? Something around there. Depending on how much you value the shaped uh, squire, shaped mage blood at. And here is a Shaper Hunter boots. Now, these boots are special in that normally people use Elevated Tailwind, Elevated Onslaught. But because Elevated Onslaught is Redeemer, and that would make the boots Hunter Redeemer instead of Hunter Shaper, you're unable to do that. So this guy is using Elevated ele Avoid Elemental Ailments and Elevated Tailwind. And then he's also able to get Pierce and T2 Chaos Res on it. So he doesn't actually have life on this pair of boots, so that's the main problem with it. But he could probably fix it pretty easily if he uses a lot of reforged influence with suffixes cannot be changed. Now overall, this profile is absolutely crazy. He is using Barely's Fallacy, shaped with Panopticon, and I think this is a near perfect roll on the crit chance. So this item is not really that expensive. The Eternity Shroud is kind of expensive. The gloves are not really that expensive, and then these items, the helm and the two rings are pretty not that crazy, right? So all of the money is pretty much concentrated in the shaped squire and shaped mage blood. So here he just has the regular jewels. Oh, this is pretty cool to see someone use 35% effects, 7 life, attack speed, and res to fix the problem. So he only has 4k life, which is not exactly the highest. So here he's using reservation efficiency, and actually, this is probably how he's able to run. One, two, three, four, five, six, five auras total. So he's running two of these reservation efficiency jewels. And then he's using one uh, small passive of chaos in order to fix his chaos res problem. So overall, super, super cool build at insanely high damage. Of course, I'm going to say the build is cool because it's partly something that I made last league. So people are wondering how much damage is this actually. So the way you actually configure the profile is that POE Ninja never takes into account Brittle and Scorch. I'm not really sure why. They just hate what's it called? Secrets of Suffering. But that's pretty good because that means that it will never get nerfed. So Tailwind is something you have. Elusive procs Nightblade. And then he's leeching at all times because he's using Glorious Vanity. And then have you crit recently? Yeah. So this is pretty much the profile, I think. Not really anything else you could check besides, what's it called? Scorch, Brittle, Endurance Charge. Oh yeah, he probably uses Frenzy Charges for sure with Anomalous Blood Rage. Bliss Charges, Onslaught, I think it's already on. Tailwind, Elusive, 50 Rage. You could probably make this like 25 if you want to average it out. Leeching, because he has Glorious Vanity. Or does he actually have, yeah, he does have Glorious Vanity. So overall, you might be wondering, what is this total damage? 237 mil. But you have to take into account that Lightning Strike can hit with both the melee hit and the projectile. So it's 237 plus 137. So that's what, like 370 mil. And then for the burst, you could actually have Vol Lightning Strike going off. So you have the Strike and the Beam. So it's around like 500 mil DPS build easily, right? So there's another version of this build, and that's just the normal version that I was playing this league without Eternity Shroud. And it seems like this build, this build is just a lot squishier. That's why I don't really recommend playing Eternity Shroud as much as the regular build with Brass Dome, because it just has less life. And you can see it has less armor, it has less total res or max res. But overall, super, super cool build. Oh, this guy's actually using Zibakwas, which is kind of weird. So that's how he actually gets his resist. He has an 84 Chaos Res and he has Zibakwas. 
So I would always prefer using Glorious Vanity. If you actually use the Ahuada with Immortal Ambition to get Overleech, it's a much better solution. But basically, I wanted to bring this profile to you guys because this is a build that I tried out and made last league, and I do think that's super, super good. And this is probably some of the most insane gear you'll ever see in Trade League in terms of chase items, right? So not really a build that anyone could really copy, but it's a fun concept to see that someone pulled off. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more beers, exalts, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.